Hello, hello. I have a very, very special guest here today with me. I am super excited. We have the one, the only, the only miracle known as Nikki Nash with us today on the Brand on Fire podcast. She is such a sweet old soul. I have only known her for a very short amount of time, but there was like an immediate click and I was like, you have to be on my podcast. So um, Nikki's going to tell you all about herself, but she just recently wrote a book, Market Your Genius, and I'm obsessed. So and we'll probably talk a lot about what's in here, as well as life, entrepreneurship, business, being a badass woman, all of the things. So Nikki, let's just dive in. And why don't you tell the audience about you and all your amazing achievements, as well as anything else you want to share? Oh my goodness. Well, first, thank you so much for having me on the show. Love it. Um, this is so much fun. It's the highlight of my day. Yay. Brings me joy. And uh, I, as you mentioned, I have a book that just came out and I'm, I call myself the high vibe marketing mentor because I have a lot of energy. <laughs> I've been told people are like, you have great energy. I'm like, thanks. What does that mean? Is when I first started my business, I'm like, I don't know what that means, but it's I'm going to take it. <laughs> um, but I help people today. I help people um, build their personal brand, get more known and build profitable businesses from their, uh, their magic, their experiences, their expertise, their zone of genius. And I don't think when I started my career that that's where I thought I was going, but, um, life has a funny way of taking you places. So I went into college initially really wanting to be an actress and mindset talked my mind, talked me out of it. Mindset is a crazy thing. Yes. And I had so much fear around failure. And so I didn't go after that dream though. Lately I've been having dreams that I'm going to pull like a I think it was Samuel L. Jackson who started acting when he was like 40 something. So I'm like, I have hopes of like 40 or 50. I'm like, this would be possible. great. Yeah. Yep. So yep. stay tuned for my yeah. acting career. And like, <laughs> we'll have you back on for a different reason. <laughs> I love it. Um, but I ended up being an English major and focusing on journalism because I love writing and um, graduated, did this summer program at NYU about the publishing industry. And I learned from editors and writers and people on the kind of creative side of the business, the writing side, as well as the marketing and the sales and the business folks. And the marketing people just seemed like so much fun. And next thing I knew, I was at InStyle Magazine in the marketing department. And I'm That's like, so this fun. wasn't the plan, but I like it. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes the not plan is better than the plan. <laughs> exactly. And that uh -huh. just led me down this path. I ended up in advertising and then um, I went back to school and got my MBA interned at Coca-Cola in Atlanta. I don't drink soda and I haven't since my freshman year of, co of college, I gave up soda. So I was like, mm, not sure this is the greatest fit for me because mm -hmm. I'm like surrounded by something that I don't consume and uh -huh. I'm tasked with marketing and selling it. So, um, wasn't an alignment fit for me, but, uh, ended up taking a job at Intel, uh, heading up their North America content, digital online marketing, which was so much fun. Um, and ultimately my aunt was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and I had this kind of life epiphany for really, let's be real more like the second time that I've had this epiphany, but the mm -hmm. epiphany was stronger this time. And it was, you do not want to spend your life here working for somebody else. That's just not your path. That's not what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And so why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. And I quit my job without a plan, freaked the heck out. <laughs> oh my gosh. We have such similar storylines. I love it. <laughs> freaked out, got a job mm -hmm. as head of marketing for a tech startup for a year and a half, mm -hmm. was back at that place where I'm like, what are you doing? This mm -hmm. is your life. You're not happy. And then I quit that job and said, I'm going to figure out this path of entrepreneurship and it'll work out and I'll figure it out. And that's what I've been doing for the last six years or so. Um, really looking back, there are so many things that I had going on that I didn't even realize. Like I had a side hustle where I was teaching digital marketing to entrepreneurs <laughs> for another company. I'm like, oh, you were already doing it. I was doing this thing and I just mm -hmm. didn't realize it. So 
Mm -hmm. It's funny how the world works, how life works. Yeah. It's like, oh, if I had only opened my eyes a little wider a couple, couple years ago, (laughs) but I think that's such a, it's such a important thing to know in the life journey, let alone the entrepreneurial journey. It's never a straight line ever, never, ever a straight line. Would you agree with that or how? I completely agree. And it's, it's one of those lines where, you know, people are like, oh yeah, even if it's not straight, it's, you know, typically moving upwards. It's like, no, like sometimes you, you know, like Paula Abdul's song, like take two, like two steps forward, <laughs> one, two step step, back. one step back. Uh-huh. Like it's like, it's uh, not really always a clear path. Now I have opposites of track stuck in my head, but um, <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome Everybody. audience. If Everybody. you don't know what that song is. <laughs> yeah. I have aged myself and Same. yeah, go look it up. It's great. <laughs> There's a cat in the music video, a fake cat. You it's just got to go watch it. It's magic. Got me through that summer I think that that video I was just like let me watch it again <laughs> I love it uh, but yeah entrepreneurship is a crazy journey ride it's not always rainbows and butterflies but it's definitely worth it definitely worth it what has been one of your like major key learning so far in your entrepreneurial journey Oh my goodness. One of the biggest lessons that I have received from this magical journey is that you just have to believe in yourself more days than you don't believe in yourself. Yes. Like I used to believe that I had to be this confident, secure, I know what I'm doing person all the time. And then when I didn't feel like that, I was like, oh my God. It's not like, working. It's not working. <laughs> Tears, terrible, mascara running, horribleness, right? Yes. Yeah. And and now I'm like, well, oh, let's go on YouTube without makeup on. It's totally cool. We, like, who cares, right? Like you you start realizing things about yourself through this journey mm-hmm. and you start getting more and more confident. And as long as you are more confident and more in alignment with who you are on like collectively more days than you are not, then you are moving towards success. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even more minutes, I would say, like even oh, in yeah. a day, <laughs> if there's more <laughs> minutes, because it's like, it can be all over the map, even in one day. But even if you're just, you know, 51% share in the positive, you know, or in the confidence and alignment, then you've done, you've done your, you've done a good job today. A hundred percent. I was yeah. talking to someone earlier today and I'm like, it's a minute by minute, second by second thing, you know, Absolutely. Like one minute, you're like, this is a great idea. I'm confident. We're so going to do this. Well, I'm going to crush business. And then two minutes later, you're like, but what if nobody buys? And it's going <laughs> to be terrible. And it's like, don't stay in that space longer than you stayed in the, I've got this space. I love that. I love that. Do you have any like little rituals or anything you do to get out of any kind of funks um, when it comes to moments like those that get a little sticky and a little tough. And I just, just before you answer, I just, just to stamp it in real hard into your, into your brain and in your heart, whoever's listening. And like, if you think everyone has it figured out, there's, there's nothing far from the truth. Like we are all figuring it out moment by moment, day by day and reju- like rejuvenating our ourselves on a moment to moment basis for sure. A hundred percent. And I always tell people, you know, no matter how confident or secure or happy someone see seems, you never know what their life is like on a day by day, moment by moment basis. Mm-hmm. And I absolutely still have insecurities and fears that come up real Same. talk. I, people are like, oh, how did you get so many endorsements in your book? I was like, you know what I had to, that was the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life because I had to deal with myself every day. Yes. It was so terrible. Yes. My brain is like, eh, nobody wants to read your book. I'm like, yes, they do. No, they don't. It's a really crazy inner dialogue. Inner dialogue. Um, Go get to- her book, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but to answer your question, the thing that really helps me personally get out of it is I need to go for a walk. I need to be outside in nature. And I didn't realize this quite honestly until the pandemic, because I didn't want to stay 
inside. And so my sister and I would go on these like five mile walks nice. in the morning, like before 7 a.m. I had already done more than 10,000 steps. I'm like, hey. Woo, mission accomplished, crushing the day. Winning. Winning. <laughs> <laughs> and now what I've noticed is when I'm really overwhelmed or I'm stressed out or I'm overthinking or I have a disempowering thought, I literally get up mm-hmm. and walk outside mm-hmm. and I go for a walk around the block and I take my phone with me. And I put on a voice recorder app and I talk it out. And I usually am just talking to myself. It makes it look less weird with the phone app (laughs) because then it looks like I'm talking. I'm just, oh, that person's just talking on their cell phone. (laughs) Yeah, no, I'm talking to myself, going for a walk. It works for me. (laughs) It's so true because when we ruminate on things in our head, it, it, it like you get stuck in that like hyper loop. And when you talk, you literally verbally say things out loud. That's why it's so good to like call a friend or do it in a voice recorder or have a mentor or something like that. Because when you actually get the words out of your face, um, it tends to take form and shape and loses a grip on the inside, on the insides. And sometimes you just hear how ridiculous your inner thoughts are and you're like, wow, that's, that's crazy. Okay. Well, I think I can do this anyway. Yeah. Um, but if you just listen to yourself, um, like your fears Mm -hmm. in your head and you don't talk them out or work through them, um, they can really stop you from going after stuff that you really want in this world and the impact you want to make. So I love it. I love it. Good one. Such a good nugget of ritual of things to do to get out of a funk for sure. So since we're, it's the brand on fire, um, podcast, What do you think is one of the most important elements about branding, personal branding? If you could impart some of your massive amounts of wisdom. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny because what I would say about personal branding, the most important part is something that anybody can do. And (laughs) it may seem really like, duh, Nikki, But (laughs) the best thing you can do to start from a personal branding perspective is really get clear on who the heck you are. Like know yourself better than anybody else knows you. Know what your strengths are. Know what you're good at. Know what you love. Know what you want. Mm -hmm. Know what your values are. Know like who you are at the core. And when you know that and you can embody that every single day and in everything that you do, then you have a solid foundation because- all you're doing from that point is amplifying that and reaching more people with your message and with who you are, but you have to be secure and confident in who you are first Mm -hmm. because otherwise then you'll go, Oh, but so-and-so is like this. And you might compare yourself to others or, you know, somebody might leave a negative rating and review on something and it may be, you know, heart wrenching. Right. Mm -hmm, But if mm -hmm. you're like, if you are really connected to who you are and who you serve and what you're about, then whether people like you or not becomes a little bit less of an issue. I'm not saying that you'll stop caring if people like you because that's just unrealistic. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I don't know if that's a thing. Yeah. Um, but I think it will have less power over you. How, yeah. And how you show up in the world. Absolutely. I, I like, I've had, I've had trolls, I've had haters and I was like, okay, I really made it. Like someone doesn't like what I'm saying. That makes, that's amazing. Um, and yes, it was difficult to navigate in the moment. And so, yeah, I, it's definitely an evolving, like you, like we said at the very beginning, moment to moment thing, and just keep anchoring into that confidence and keep evolving who you are and knowing and knowing and knowing and knowing more. And then yes, it gets, it gets easier and easier on that front. Yeah. You can absolutely. swat it away a little, a little quicker and, and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I don't necessarily, my, my questions aren't linear and don't always make sense, but with writing your own book, like what was one of the most significant things that came to you from it? Like what, what did you learn either about yourself or you guys, this is Hay House, right? This is Hay House. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hay House book. She's a Hay House author. She's being modest, even in her own bio at the beginning. She's worked with Travel and Leisure, In Style, Louis Vuitton, Hennessy. So she's, she's legit, you guys. So in that process of writing the book, um, tell me, tell me the juice. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny writing 
the book was probably one of the biggest confidence builders for me right now. And it's not even who's publishing it or that it was published. It was writing out what I work on with my clients and my thoughts and my processes in a new way. Mm -hmm. And I wrote it out and I'm like, man, this is good. Yes. (laughs) I feel like, man, this makes sense. This is helpful. Um, and I think it, it changed the way that I perceived who I am and what I do. Yes. And I think that, you know, when you're able to really truly put your heart and soul into something and it doesn't need to be a book, but it could be a book. It could be a podcast. It could be a YouTube channel. It could be a coaching service. It doesn't matter. Consulting offering, Mm -hmm. whatever it is. But when you really put your heart and soul into really helping someone grow and develop or transform, Mm -hmm. that can be incredibly rewarding. Yes. And it could also be when you see the results that people get, suddenly you're going, wow, you know, I know my stuff. This is great. And so, yeah, I would say that that's one of the biggest things from the book that I, I got from it. The other, the second biggest thing, it might be the first, like the biggest, biggest thing, but one of the other big things yes. that I got from this is, um, learning to lean into my strengths and who I am and not to see what could be perceived as a weakness as a weakness. And to mm. give you a, a very specific example, I am a notorious procrastinator. And those words used to mean something to me. I used to be like, I wish I could stop procrastinating. Why are you such a procrastinator? I would blame myself for procrastinating, right? Yep. And I had to get this book out. I had a deadline. The deadline moved because of COVID. um, And when everything was shut down in the US and bookstores, especially on the coast, um, bookstores and things like that were shut down. It's like, nobody wants to release a book when nobody can go pick up the book. And so a lot of book, uh, deals, or even just manufacture the book, a lot of, um, deadlines got pushed back. And so I I said to myself, you need to get this book done and you can't write the entire book 24 hours before it's due. Yes. Like you cannot do that. And to give you quick insight, I wrote my book proposal, which led to this book deal in 48 hours because I procrastinated. Right. Uh huh. I love it. And I, I do not recommend that for anybody. It wasn't the most perfect proposal that I think I could have written, but it was, I think it was a darn good one. Um, it worked, but mm-hmm. w- it worked. But mm-hmm. what I realized is that I thrive creatively under that pressure and that's mm-hmm. why I procrastinate. Mm-hmm. So I manufactured it. And so what I did was I got a group of about 80 people excuse me. And most of them were strangers. I met a lot of them in Facebook groups or they were friends of people who I met in a Facebook group. There were Mm -hmm. some, a a small percentage of people that I knew and friends, but they became essentially my focus group for this book. And I said, I will release a chapter a week to you for 90 days. And I knew it was going to be, so 12 weeks, essentially you will get Mm -hmm. a new chapter every week. You'll have a week to read it and give me just your quick, Comment. oh, this resonated, this I have a question about. I, I didn't want people to look at it from a grammatical standpoint because I procrastinated writing the chapter. So like, they, it's not like I spent a week writing the chapter and then gave it to them. It was due every Sunday morning, every Saturday night, I was writing this chapter. Mm-hmm. Sometimes Sunday morning, I'd wake up at like <laughs> three in the morning so that this thing could go out on time Sunday morning. I love and it. So I still procrastinated. But I procrastinated in a structure or I used that pressure in a structure where I was really writing the book over the course of a long period of time. And it gave me an initial manuscript and really leaning into the fact that, okay, you're a procrastinator. How can we use that to your advantage as opposed to beating yourself up over it was huge for me. I love this so, 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 so much. I think a lot of the audience can relate to maybe having some procrastinator tendencies as most creative entrepreneurial people do, you know, like shiny object syndrome, all the things. So I love this idea of self-manufactured pressure. (laughs) I work really well under those circumstances, circumstances as well. So yeah, guys, like do what you need to do to create 
a system and a structure that works for you versus feeling bad about, you know, you can use it as your strength versus your weakness. Like you said, I love this thinking. I think this is just so helpful. So, so helpful. Love that one. Um, yeah. So get into some Facebook groups and ask for help. <laughs> I'm going to be delivering. Um, I, I feel like you're also giving like where a lot of marketing business type books. Um, and we don't have to only talk about the book, but I think it's so, so refreshing for me personally, reading your book is it, I get this like female juju inside the book. And I really appreciate that from getting, getting marketing and business advice from a modern woman just feels so juicy and delicious to me. Um, can you talk on that a little bit? Yeah. You know, I've, I've had a career in marketing and when I joined the wonderful world of entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and I walked down the business aisle and I looked at books, there are books written by women on, you know, business and entrepreneurship and, and their successes and things like that. But I couldn't find a marketing book that was really popular or being referred that was written by a woman. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I'm black. So yes. I was like, I wasn't seeing like a black woman writing a marketing yes. book in the aisles. And I was yes. like, screw that. I'm going to write a marketing book and I'm going to write it for women. And I don't even care that it's bright pink. And some people are like, ah, oh, it's a bright pink book as a male. I don't know if we'll get it. I'm like, I don't care. I didn't write it for you. And if you <laughs> do get it, I'm really excited, right? Like I have, <laughs> yes. there are some guys that have read the book and they just don't walk around with it. And I'm like, that's fine. I don't care. I don't see a problem. If you did walk around with it, it's a really cool looking book. And yes. I think you should be proud to walk around with it, but yes. I didn't write it for them. I wrote it because, um, I wanted representation on the bookshelves and a book that was entertaining and engaging and helpful. Yes. And I've had people talk about some business books or specifically marketing books where they're like, I couldn't finish it because it was dry or because yes. it wasn't, it didn't feel like it was written for me. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm like, well, the energy of me is definitely what I put in this book because mm -hmm. it's one of those things where it's not just, oh, you have to write emails. It's, it's not written that way at all. Even though I do give advice and suggest that you write emails, it's just not written in that way. I love this. So it, and it all proves to the point of like authentically showing up as who you are with your signature energy. And that's what lands, like it'll attract the right people, which is so important for branding in general. And then obviously if you're promoting any kind of book program, anything is just, and I think a lot of people fall into this trap of, oh, it needs to look like this or sound like this or be super buttoned up. And I'm like time and time again, just trying to debunk that myth over and over and over again. It's like the more authentically we show up as who we are and let our energy, our specific energy flow into whatever we do. That's where, that's where the magic as we, as we've discovered is our favorite word. That's where the magic lies. And I, I feel like you teach that a lot too in the book as well. So absolutely. And yeah. real talk, when I started my business, I had left corporate. So like, mm -hmm. let's, <laughs> I love corporate. Yeah. And I believe that I was starting, you know, a business coaching business is what I, what I was setting out to do or to be a business consultant, either, either one of those. Mm -hmm. And, um, cause it's, I'm more of a hybrid, but that's what I set out to do. And when I look at my early videos and even photo shoots, very, like my very first ones, I had this belief that I had to show up and look businessy. Right. Mm -hmm. So you look <laughs> My first Instagram, I mean, not Instagram, they were Facebook lives. Some of my first Facebook lives, I would go to my parents' house and they have this room. I call it the Christmas room. Uh, it's the room that we only go in on Christmas and, it's, <laughs> <laughs> and it has like these, uh, I don't even know how to describe the style, but it, it looks like a museum, possibly like British style, like furniture. It just, mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it, but it's it, very, very stuffy. Astute. 
astute. Yes. Astute is a better word, but <laughs> it was looking a little stuffy. And then I put on, I used Rent the Runway because I'm like, I had yes. went from corporate to a tech startup and went from, you know, business attire to sweatpants. So my wardrobe was a little special. So I went mm -hmm. to Rent the Runway and I got, you know, tweed blazers and I whatnot, love right? love it. And then there's me with basically I'm like, who is this person? <laughs> sitting there teaching and it was, it was uh content and coffee was my show and if you look at some of the early videos that's what i looked like and i send them um to people because i think a lot of early ones they're still on youtube um and i will send them to clients who are wondering well how do i show up like you and you're so confident and you're so this I'm like, go watch my first videos mm -hmm. like, just go watch them okay mm -hmm. look at how not me i was when i showed up yes Yes. Because so I thought key. that's what I had to do. And it's not sustainable. I gave that, I didn't keep with the rent the runway in the, the rooms because then I just had an idea. And I think all of that went out the window when I did videos at the gym, right? I was yes. like, oh, I just finished a workout and I had this idea and I promised I'd go live at this time. So here I am. And once I started doing the no makeup lives, I started feeling like I could show rent up the anyway. Runway, lost your business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, rent the runway. I do I love mean, you. This is this things. is like such another juicy point. Um, that like just do it. You just begin. And sometimes for some many of us too, just begin again if you need to. Like you may have already done the Christmas room version and you stopped because that didn't feel right and good for you begin again. And maybe it'll be some other version that's not quite right, but you don't really know. And you don't really get that clarity until you put yourself into action. And if you need to self-manufacture that pressure by all means, please do. Um, but it's true. Like I found this video of me <laughs> from 2009 and I'm sitting in like one of my early apartments and uh, oh boy <laughs> like it was scary to watch I'm like I could only really stomach a couple minutes of it but hey man you gotta start somewhere you gotta do it and you figure it out and it gets more true and more authentic as you go and you start to find that voice I mean don't worry about having it all buttoned up and perfect from the get-go yeah because you won't you really won't you and won't. everybody gets better over time. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I always tell people you didn't walk on your first try. And if yes. you did, you sure as heck didn't sustain that such that you could walk essentially a marathon mm -hmm. the first day you took a step. Yes. So why is it that when you're taking your first steps in business, you're expecting to have an eight figure business overnight, right? Yes. Like yes. <laughs> let's manage expectations a little bit. Yeah. You know, most yeah. of us are maybe like a little bit we're, we're exactly where we should be, but feel like we need to be further. And, yeah. and that's not always the case. And what is further? I mean, there is no, you know, you, you'll we'll all get somewhere eventually. Right. Absolutely. I love that. What do you think too? I'm curious your opinion is like, I don't know. I think sometimes people appreciate the no makeup gym video over some super polished situation. Cause like it's more relatable a lot of the time. Would you, yeah. how do you feel about that? Yeah. You know, I think that you have to stay true to your brand. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people want brands right now, especially personal brands where you're relatable. Yes. To some degree. Now there are some people that show their that they're relatable, but they still show up in makeup and hair done. And, and I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. I just happen to be really lazy. <laughs> Isn't necessarily the right I was word? wondering what word was going to come out like, of your mouth. Like, <laughs> like, but that's part of it. Like, I just mm -hmm. don't like to give you an example. I shaved my head at the end of 2017 mm -hmm. because I was tired of doing my hair. <laughs> like legit shaved my head and I wish I had shaved it sooner because I shaved it in winter. Like basically it was winter and I live in New Jersey and it gets oh very God. cold and I did not understand how cold it got. And I literally wow. <laughs> said, this is what guys deal with. Like, no wonder they're always wearing hats. Bean it was so cold. Hat. I froze my head, but oh. I, I kept shaving my head for a solid, maybe six to eight months, maybe nine months. Um, 
and rocks it. having a shaved head Amazing. because I didn't feel like doing it. And didn't your hair grow back like more curly or something? Yeah, or something? super curly. How so funny. I wish my hair, um, my hair is straight right now, but it's, um, my hair when it's straight is past my collarbone, mm-hmm. it's like down to here. And then mm-hmm. when it's curly, it's like, <laughs> like the, up to your ears. Like, oh, it's maybe a little bit longer. It's like uh-huh. maybe, yeah, chin length. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it grew back super curly. I've never experienced this level of kinky curliness in my oh hair my before. Gosh. And it's kind of great I to the point it. where I didn't know how long it was. And somebody um, was doing my hair and they said they probably were going to trim it, but they had to blow dry it straight first. She blow dried my hair straight. And my hair at the time was pretty much attached to my head. It was very close to my head. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, my hair is not growing at all. She blew dry it straight. And it was almost at my shoulders. Amazing. And I went, oh huh shrinkage is real who knew (laughs) who knew who knew knew? I have a running joke with a couple of my clients blow drying our hair is just like we avoid it at all costs because it just takes way too long (laughs) way too long I only but my hair straight right now because I went to the hairdresser and Uh got it done that's the only time my hair will be straight as if uh if someone I got else color or somebody else does it or something. Cause I'm yep. not going to do it. Yep. I'm with you. I'm with you. Find, find your grooves, find your ways, right. Yeah, Whatever exactly. works for you. I love it. Any other like juicy branding or marketing tidbits like that you would want to share with the audience? Yeah. You know, if I were to boil them down into kind of like, Hey, if you could do these things, you will see amazing momentum. It would be get really focused on the destination, essentially, like get clear on what success looks like for you and keep moving towards that because Mm -hmm. there's going to be other people's definitions of success and other people's, you know, priorities are going to pop into your life and you can easily get sidetracked. Mm -hmm. But if you can stay laser focused on, Hey, this is what I'm working towards. Then that's when you see magic. And that's one of the beauties that I learned from writing this book, because I'm like, I have to get this book out there. I have to ask people for endorsements. I have to do this. I have to do that. And it got me very focused for a period of time where, yeah, there were other things that I'd work on and do, but I absolutely had to get certain things done with the book. Love it. And that got me momentum. So choose what you want to focus on, take actions every day, be consistent with your actions and show up as yourself. And so if you do that, whether you want to write a blog or write a book or have a podcast or a YouTube channel, or, you know, just send emails to people, your list every week. It doesn't matter to me what it is, but choose something, focus on it, be consistent and mm-hmm. be yourself. Choose it, focus, be consistent and be yourself. I love it. So, so good. I mean, literally rinse, repeat with every area of your life and business. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no way you can't be successful. I mean, it's true. It's truth right there. Hashtag truth. Hashtag truth. Hashtag truth. Well, it's been so fun chatting with you and having you here today. I'm sure everyone gleaned a lot of great information, including you don't have to blow your blow dry your hair to go live. Uh, (laughs) And um, tell us where we can find you. And then I'll mention the book again. It's Market Your Genius by Nikki Nash. Super great. Read it all the things. Um, and where else can people find you? Yeah. I mean, the best place to go would be Nikki Nash.co, which is Nikki Nash.co forward slash magic, because that's our favorite word. I love the word and, magic. Right. And when you go there, you'll not only, um, see, you know, how to get the book if you're interested, but I have some free gifts for you guys around building your brand and, and sharing your message with the world. So you can get some sweet free gifts there. And, uh, also find me on social and I have a podcast. So all of that is listed right there on the page. Yeah, Amazing. Yeah. We'll put that in the show notes as well. Um, so great having you, Nikki. Thank you so much for being with us and all the good things. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.